If the GFCI is not properly connected, it will trip and shut down the system. If correct wiring is verified and the GFCI still trips, check to see if the proper GFCI is installed. Check the label in the system box near TB1 to determine the maximum amperage draw for the system. In this example, 40 amps is shown. Be sure the GFCI is rated for more amperage than the system will draw. For a 240 volt dedicated system, a two-pole GFCI with no load neutral is acceptable. For a 12240 volt system, the GFCI must include a load neutral out. If the white neutral wire is routed from the GFCI neutral bar directly to TB1 in the system box, then the GFCI will trip when a 120 volt device is activated. For a detailed wiring checklist, please review the previous segment of this video on proper GFCI wiring or the GFCI manufacturer's instructions. If the wiring is correct and the GFCI will not reset, then unplug the pump and try to reset the GFCI. If the GFCI trips again, then unplug the blower and reset the GFCI. If the GFCI continues to trip, then do the same procedure for the ozone generator. However, if the GFCI stopped tripping after you unplugged one of the SPA's components, turn off the power to the SPA, then plug in each component except for the one that tripped the GFCI. Power up the system. If the GFCI holds, then you have correctly identified the problem. Repair or replace the component as instructed by the SPA manufacturer. If you have unplugged all the SPA's components and the GFCI still does not reset, then the problem is most likely a ground fault in the heater. To disconnect the heater, first turn off the circuit breaker. Then remove both heater straps or wires from the terminal block, not the heater itself. On some systems, the heater straps will be connected directly to the circuit board. After restoring the power, try to reset the GFCI again. If it holds after the system calls for heat, then replace the heater. If the GFCI still trips, look for pinched or shorted wires at the transformer. This inspection will not be necessary for systems with the transformer mounted on the circuit board. Make sure the screws that attach the transformer to the system box have not damaged the installation of the transformer wires. If the transformer wires are undamaged, check for any other pinched wires. Refer to the wiring diagram to verify the correct wiring of the control system. If everything looks in perfect working order, then the GFCI may be defective.